Three's company emerged in the 1970s as a beaming beacon of laughter and lightheartedness, captivating millions of viewers. At the core of this television phenomenon, two remarkable actors took turns embodying the quintessential landlord, Mr. Roper, initially the unmatched Norman Fell, and later the dynamic Don Knotts. So what happened behind the scenes? Facts First presents, did Norman Fell hate Don Knotts for stealing his role on Three's Company? The Ropers got their own series. During the 70s, which many TV fans think of as the golden era of sitcoms, Three's Company was the toast of television, with a unique storyline revolving around a man sharing an apartment with two female roommates, a concept that was quite unconventional at the time. As the series blossomed, so did the prominence of the quirky and constantly bickering landlords, Stanley and Helen Roper, who owned the building that housed the unusual trio. Hoping to shake things up and capitalize on the show's booming popularity, during the third season, the show's creator envisioned a bright future for the Ropers, with the idea of propelling them to star in their own spin-off series. Stanley, played by Norman Fell, was a cynical and often irritable character, oblivious to the secret that his tenant Jack Tripper, played by John Ritter, was not gay as he was led to believe. This salacious secret became a consistent plot point, driving much of the comedic element of the series. Norman Fell initially had reservations about venturing into a spin-off, wary of disrupting the charm and success of the show. But the prospect of elevating the Ropers to newfound fame seemed too promising to resist, especially for Audra Lindley, who was eager to explore Helen Roper's journey further. It was a gamble where Fell took a leap of faith, banking on the potential success of the new series, with a safety net agreement that allowed for his possible return if the show failed to secure a second season. The grand send-off arrived in the 20th episode of the third season, titled An Anniversary Surprise where the audience saw Stanley involved in a mysterious affair, fostering suspicions and whispers of a brewing scandal. But it was eventually revealed the other woman was a real estate agent, assisting him in securing a luxurious townhouse, a splendid anniversary surprise for his wife Helen. This event marked the Ropers' transition from their old apartment building, venturing into a new beginning encapsulated in the spin-off series The Ropers. The inaugural episode showcased their adjustment to their new luxurious surroundings, setting the stage for their standalone journey. The show had already secured a spot as a series before it even premiered as a backdoor pilot, showcasing the network's faith in the project. But as they settled into their new environment and storyline, the reception was somewhat mixed. While the Ropers didn't quite capture the same essence and charisma as Three's Company, it had its moments of glory and managed to carve out a niche audience. The replacement of the Ropers with Ralph Furley, played by the vivacious Don Knotts, in the original series was deemed a success, adding a new dash of flavor to the sitcom. That being said, in hindsight, the decision to move the Ropers to their own show and later changing its airing schedule in the second season may not have been the most strategic moves. While the Ropers managed to churn out content that resonated with a core segment of the show's base, Many fans still argue that retaining the Ropers in Three's company would have perhaps been a better call. Behind the scenes with a comedy maverick Reflecting on Three's company, we find ourselves reminiscing about the extraordinary synergy between the cast members, notably between Joyce DeWitt and the legendary Don Knotts. During a heartfelt interview on Larry King Live shortly after Knotts' death in 2006, DeWitt shared some treasured memories and experiences from the set that highlighted the brilliance of working alongside a comic legend. In the interview, DeWitt warmly remembered the effortless comedic flow that Knotts brought to the scenes. His natural ability to bring laughter to the set with his infectious energy was something that left a significant impression on DeWitt. As she recalled, a mere exchange of lines would often turn into a spectacular display of comedy. DeWitt illuminated the impeccable professionalism Knotts exhibited, able to dazzle with a fresh and vibrant performance take after take. His mastery in portraying Mr. Furley left DeWitt, and undoubtedly many others on set, in awe, unable to hold back laughter and sometimes causing the cameras to stop and reset. The World's Embrace of Mr. Furley Though critics may have had a preference for Knotts' earlier role as Barney on The Andy Griffith Show, it's undebatable that his portrayal of Mr. Furley in Three's Company held a special place in the viewers' hearts and in television history. Despite not receiving the accolades and Emmy nominations that his previous role garnered, 
Knotts's performance as Furley exhibited a unique charm that resonated deeply with audiences worldwide. The global warm reception of Mr. Furley was indeed a reflection of Knotts's immense talent. His character found a place in various aspects of popular culture, even eventually making a cameo in a quirky yet memorable Family Guy segment. Even after his passing, the impact of Knotts's role as Furley remained a significant topic of discussion, illustrating the enduring appreciation and fondness for his contribution to the entertainment industry. Knotts had the remarkable ability to spread joy through his portrayals, offering the world moments of levity and genuine laughter. While his role as Mr. Furley might not have garnered critical acclaim, it stands as a vibrant and cherished chapter in a career that sparkled with memorable performances. The Turning Tides of Norman Fell's Career Obviously, Knotts' career and legacy is something we can discuss in glowing terms, but you might be wondering what happened to poor Norman Fell. Well, in the ever oscillating world of TV, Norman's journey is a roller coaster ride. After the untimely cancellation of the Ropers, Fell found himself at a crossroads, yearning to return to the familiar corridors of Three's Company. It was a place where he had earlier enthralled audiences with his portrayal of Mr. Roper. Sadly, his hopes were dashed as the producers had already found a valuable asset in Don Knotts. According to Fell, the network seemed to have plotted the termination of the Ropers meticulously, delaying the official cancellation announcement until it was too late for him and his co-star Audra Lindley to reclaim their positions in Three's Company. A disappointing revelation indeed, but it's important to note that Fell harbored no resentment towards Don Knotts, who had stepped into his shoes on the popular show. Their paths had crossed before, in the Steve Allen Show, laying the foundation for mutual respect and understanding that persisted through the changing tides of their careers. Fell was let down by ABC, but found no fault in Knotts embracing a new role. Undeterred, Fell showcased immense resilience, paving a new path in his acting journey. He remained a dynamic presence on the small screen, embracing both comedic and dramatic roles with grace. He shined in series like Teachers Only, where he played the character Ben Cooper, and needles and pins as Nathan Davidson. His versatility allowed him to leave a remarkable imprint in a variety of shows, including Murder, She Wrote, The Love Boat, and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He was even recognized with an Emmy nomination for his sterling performance in the 1976 miniseries Rich Man, Poor Man, where he played the unforgettable role of Tom Jordash's boxing trainer. After decades of being a familiar face on the small screen, he graced the television screen for one last memorable appearance in 1997, playing Mr. Roper one last time on the sitcom Ellen. It was a fitting tribute to his legacy before he succumbed to cancer in 1998 at age 74. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory from Three's Company? Let us know in the comments section below.